well, with the Raw 2023 just around the corner, I uh, got a bit of gear together. I don't usually take um, tin foods. My bivvy was only about two or three hours walk in the bush, so I decided tin food was a cheaper option. Yeah, I was keen to get in there and uh, collect a couple of cameras that have been out there all year. <clears throat> Do the weight test. Yep, <laughs> it's enough. <laughs> no, I bloody near put all this in there. Camera's still there, so that's a good thing. She was a bit of a botch job, but. I got this stag on video back in 21 uh, in velvet. Uh, he's got a couple more years under his belt. Um, he's uh, not a spectacular animal and should really be cold out. Sadly, this place has been subject to the culling out of mature hinds. Uh, in fact, any deer, anything four feet with a heartbeat, which uh, has certainly taken its toll because uh, the roar in this area now is um, almost a non-event. I've spent the last two years in there and it was quite disappointing. So this year I didn't even go in there. Stag numbers are much higher than hinds. I'd put them at about four to five stags to one hind. This was the best stag I've got on video, but uh, sadly he's um, gotten old and grown deformed. This is one of the short hunts I went on while uh, picking up the cameras, setting up bivvies. I had uh, given a roar and he um, actually caught me off guard and he snuck in around the 10th um, minute and uh, yeah, started squealing. I scoped him, he was a stag. Big neck, head, um, you can't see much in the video. I uh, wound the scope up to 7 to get a bit of look. Decided not to shoot him and uh, when he ran off he uh, kind of saw a bit of decent length and um, started to question whether I shouldn't have taken him. But uh, that's the split second decisions we make sometimes. Man, I can't believe that came in. Only roared 15 minutes ago. Fuck it, maybe I should have just shot it. When this uh, spiker came through, he um, kind of ballsed it up actually because I kept looking to my left in case the uh, big stag was sneaking through as well. Um, so I kind of had my attention drawn all over the place and not sure where to look. Um, I actually tried scaring this spiker off with a few shakes of my hand and waving and a couple of psts, but sort of couldn't get rid of him. I have shortened this footage down because he stood there for almost two minutes. He eventually ran in the end and uh, ran back up near where the big stag was and uh, squealed. So yeah, that was basically the end of it all. Been a bloody, quite an exciting morning, you know, for 23rd of March, so that's bloody awesome. You know, you always look in hindsight and go, well, should I have snuck into that animal that was thrashing his antlers? But, you know, you're moving, they're not. Um, at times, you know, they thrash around and they stop and look and they're going to bust you. Um, and actually the way I would have had to have gone, 
I would have walked straight into that little yearling anyway, so, you know, that was the only open place to walk through, so, either way, it probably would have ended up the same scenario. Um, so I'm going to go around the hill now, I'm actually on a camera mission set up today, so, um, we'll go around the hill, spend the rest of the day quietly getting to uh, where I want to set up this camera. This Walla, I haven't been to it for, for years, um, found it about, oh it'll be 25 plus years ago, something like that. Uh, wandered around that country for a few years and um, just kept missing it and thought oh, it had dried up, you know, and there's a number of guts and things that uh, I made the effort last year and um, did a bit of zigzag and curiosities and uh, found the bloody thing, so it was well used too. Get down there and go and have a look at it. This is a young stag I passed up about mid-April. Um, I already had a stag down, but above that I was in an area where I didn't want to uh, fire a shot off that day, so I just let him be. This area is well known for sixes and not a lot of eights in this area. Uh, it's quite possible that uh, we're looking at the master stag of this area. Stags or deer in general are hard to see when they're not in motion. They didn't move. Half the time we wouldn't even see them. This is another stag that we got on Squid Cam. Uh, never seen him before. This is about late March. We still got his red coat. As the roar progresses, he actually develops body-wise into a rather large stag. Early May, I got him on one of my cameras, about 800 plus meters away from where squid cam was you gotta wonder how he got this way you know through injury or whatever and if you think he uh, looks bad his raw is no better I've um, had uh, three roars, just very low moans, uh, single calls. Just those real quiet moans that uh, almost sound like a red. Uh, but it's a seeker. Um, they're up in here somewhere. I've come from about oh, 300, 400 metres away. So I've closed the distance by roughly half. I've got the wind coming down and this way a wee bit at this stage, so it's good. As you see, the sun's well up, so got away late. Flat batteries in the car. <laughs> anyway, we'll uh, get up in here and hopefully um, get something on camera. Just bloody come across a uh, pig bed. Might have been where a sow bloody gave birth. Carry a lot of shit around, don't they? Huffing and puffing there, just come up a hill. Couple old scrapes there. He's uh, just giving me a um, nice single call off camera right through there. Unfortunately, we're actually heading into the sun, so at times you get blinded. So, but we'll close another. He's or 150, 
120. So I'm going to slow right up now and um, yeah, after a bit of meat too. So yeah, maybe uh, if one comes in, may take it for meat. Just over there. Single call. Just over in here. I just walked into a uh, satellite stack. Um, went up there, gave a couple of squeals. He's just roared. So sometimes squeals, you know, cause damage. Other times they don't. <laughs> so you could hear that. Not necessarily good. story short um, a lot happened prior to this moment stalking in single calls etc um, but it got to this stage I've been on them for about an hour and uh, that squealing satellite stag earlier on yeah that was the end of it so uh, I pulled back and left okay um, it's the next day now that stag yesterday as I said shut up so I've come in early this morning, it's about 6.37, um, been waiting on the hill behind me until daylight came and uh, heard a couple of faint calls, so he is uh, still going over there, so I'm going to work my way over and uh, get the wind right, hopefully, and uh, yeah, see what happens. There's a fair bit of wind around today. Mist falling and the trees dripping, so yeah. But we'll give it a go. Well, I've come up to this next ridge. The stag's going there. But I've heard one down in there too, so I don't know. We'll just, uh, I need to listen and get another pinpoint on who's where. When I'm closing in on stags and I find a place that I want to stand for a while or roar from, I quite often uh, clear area where my feet are. Um, I don't want to have a stag sneaking in on me and I just happen to move a bit, snap a stick and it's over. So I'll actually clear where my feet are and I'll clear any debris that's sort of obstructing the view. Uh, the closer I get to the stags, I um, do this very quietly, not like what I've just done here kicking stuff around and ripping at stuff but I know that I'm uh, about 200 metres away 150 After 15 odd minutes, maybe 20, uh, quite a few replies, I decided to move in to a bit closer. I went down to about 80 metres, uh, cleared another spot and spent about uh, 45 minutes here. Being 80 metres away, my uh, camera picked up a few of their roars, but not all of them. Um, it was quite a standoff here for a while and a young spiker snuck in so at one point I was trying to hide from him uh, while keeping the other stags going. The spiker had a very dark body so I was quite concerned it was one of the stags that had snuck round to the left um, so it took me quite a while to idea his head as it was obstructed behind quite a bit of um, pepperwood. He uh, painfully stood there for about 15 minutes. The spiker eventually did move off in the direction of the stags, so that was good. 
So with the spike had moved on, I was able to uh, make another move and get in closer. One thing about this hunt is I've never hunted stags roaring in such open bush. So in the knowing that if I could see them at 40-50 metres, they could do the same. Over the whole time I'd moved about five times. And uh, I was now at what I didn't know was going to be the shooting spot. Um, the main stag was off to my right at about 40 something metres. Also another stag just to my left at about 40 metres. So things were getting really wound up now. Um, I hadn't seen the left hand stag sneak through. Uh, he gave a bark and a grunt from the stag chasing him. A couple of times I had a chance to shoot the stag to the left, but I was still after the master stag. But my movement with my rifle had attracted the attention of the stag on the left and he now started squealing at me. So at this stage with the stag squealing at what I believed was me, uh, things weren't going so well. So I kind of made the decision now that if I got a chance, clean shot, I would... Uh, just get some meat while I can. To get to the master stag I was going to have to go up over this mound. The downside of that I was going to have to walk in front of the uh, stag to the left. But what I didn't know, the spiker that I'd seen earlier was also standing there this whole time just out of view. So at this point if I'd had to go up the master stag I actually would have walked straight into that spiker and it would have been the end of it. I had no idea he was standing there this whole time. It was only after I pulled trigger that the spiker bolted out of there. I didn't realise but the uh, satellite stag had snuck back in out of my view and got booted back out by the master stag. Yes, my squeaky bolt could do us some oil. Well, it was decision time, so I decided to take some meat while I could. You know, I don't know whether I should have pulled trigger then or not, but, you know, you sort of saw what was going on and all this bloody wind and leaves everywhere and I, I couldn't believe I actually got this close in this wind. It would have taken a few seconds, big backdraft and that was it. 
would have been over for the day. So took one while I could. Righto. I'm pretty sure that's not the one I saw earlier. Could be. Actually, looking at the stag from this angle. Yeah, it is the one seen earlier. Yeah, now that's him. That young stag wants to come back, eh? Never knew he was here. He was saying nothing. But um, this fellow was having a go. <laughs> Got chased out a couple of times. Righto. Time to get busy. It's about the only thing to hang it off is this bit of a spar that's solid. Now the reason I uh, wear these gloves is, um, you know, keeps your hands clean, but um, if you want to carry on hunting, grabbing hold of other beach poles to climb around the bush and, you know, you're climbing up banks and hands are clean, you're not leaving a blood trail everywhere. Actually bloody hit him where I was sort of aimed, right in the base of the neck. As his uh, head was turned, it was... So... Yeah. That's all cleaned up, so... Uh, Head off, I guess. 10.30, so... Yeah. Well, I think you're about to hear that um, wind up in the trees there, but... She's blowing its ass off today, so... I've come in to um, bone this deer out. The knife could do with a sharpen. And, uh, yeah, use this shitty day to do this job. Yeah, he's reasonable condition, quite a bit of fat. Uh, he's one of those stags that, you know, they do a lot of running around. Chasing, chasing, all over the place. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's quite thick all through here. So, yeah. Right, or well job done. Um, got a big bag of bloody steaks for camp feed. Add that to the pack and grab me rope. Bit of a clean up. And uh, out of here. That is what you call a tidy mess. Oh, that's a bloody pack full, alright. <laughs> 